move was a surprise, as many had expected Bank Indonesia to keep rates unchanged amid concerns over slowing growth. However, inflation is soaring in Indonesia. Higher food prices had sent April consumer prices up almost 8 percent, 9 percent, pardon me, year on year. That's the highest rate since September 2006. The government is hoping to adjust its regulated fuel prices by 20 to 30 percent, which could boost inflation further. Bank Indonesia also left the door open for further rate hikes over the course of this year. Let's get out to our reporters now for a rundown of how the major markets are trading, starting with Emily in Hong Kong. Emily. Thanks, more. And 30 minutes into trade, the benchmark has uh, flipped into negative territory. We did open higher, but now sitting just on the line or nine points lower. 26,268 shares, though, bucking downtrend, down uh, up three tenths of a percent, 14,690. I do want to tell you that Merrill Lynch has cut its year end target for the Hang Seng Index to 28,000 from 30,000. It's saying that Asian markets will remain volatile given that inflation risk is still on the upside and global growth is slowing, saying that upside potential will be limited following pauses on U.S. rate cuts. Now, I am watching shares of Alibaba.com. The stock is a higher 2.6%, was up as much as 4% earlier, making back some of the losses on Monday. Um, it did report better than expected Q1 results after the market closed yesterday, rising some 111% to 300 million Chinese yuan, or about 43 million U.S. dollars. Now, you are looking at the stock right now. It's up 2.6%. Citi has raised the price target to $11.25, but maintained a sell call on this stock. Also uh, under a bit of pressure this morning is shares of China Dongshang. That's after news about a share sale from Morgan Stanley Private Equity. They're planning to sell $142 million worth of shares or about 300 million shares with an option to up that to 354 million shares. Now they're going to be doing so at a price range between 353 and 368. Uh, it's trading at 368 as we speak but I do want to point out it is trading below its IPO price um, of 398 when it uh, hit the market in October last year, which may be a reason why uh, Morgan Stanley is getting out of the stock now. I'm going to send things down to, to Sydney and Jeffrey James. Okay, and Sydney is here, and thank you very much, Emily Chan. Well, the Aussie market really flirting with uh, with the line at the moment. Started uh, started off. Uh, at the sounding of the bell, a uh, half a percent into the clear after predictions, it would go as high as one percent, but we're coming right off those earlier highs and uh, heading down toward the zero there. We're ahead at the moment by uh, just four points. 5.705 is the level of the ASX 200 at the moment. We're also seeing some selling in the Australian dollar uh, coming down quarter of a percent in Asian trade. Now, the dollar did today uh, kick up above the 95 cent line. That is for the second time in the last uh, month, and that uh, we are watching with predictions from uh, currency analysts saying uh, that it will again move up toward, uh, according to one analyst this morning, the 97 uh, cent level. But we're certainly not seeing that at the moment. Take a look at the five big banks at the moment, all of them falling and uh, substantially so. We've got St. George off there by 2.6% uh, at the moment. That is leading decline as uh, Westpac Banking Corporation of 2.3%. In financials, Macquarie and Babcock and Brown both falling off. We've got M Macquarie off there by 2.3% at the moment. A rough day for banking stocks and financials but by G take a look now at the resources stocks and following on from those terrific uh, remarkable prices really uh, from uh, oil overnight we see uh, this flowing into the resource sector here in this country this day BHP Rio Tinto Zinefex all on the fly at the moment that is it from Sydney for now take it back to Asia <laughs> All right, time for Stock Central with Arnold Gay right now. Hey, Arnold. More a couple of Singapore listed stocks which look fairly interesting uh, this morning. I want to start with uh, Singtel, Southeast Asia's largest telco. Take a look at the stock showing a little bit of weakness down by 1% right now, uh, off uh, by about 4 cents at 382 Singapore dollars. The main reason here uh, is probably a cut, a ratings cut by Citigroup, cutting its uh, uh, ratings on the stock to a hold and also reducing its target price by 10% to 4 Singapore dollars from 440 previously. Now, Citigroup analyst uh, Anand Ramachandran is saying that Singtel's EPS would uh, fall to 5.5% for the current fiscal 09 year ending March, and this would be the slowest earning growth in five years. Now, Singtel, of course, part of a consortium that is bidding to build a super-fast broadband network in Singapore. Its stock 
uh, under a bit of pressure today. DBS, another stock which is uh, which seen some volatile trading this morning. The stock was up 1.5 percent at the start of trade, but it since fell. A bit of choppy session, as you can tell. They're now off by about 0.6 percent. Its Q1 numbers coming in this morning stronger than expected. A 2 percent fall in net profit, 603 million Singapore dollars. But the market was expecting something like 566 million. But what's likely to be happening right now, investors are waiting that press conference to be held by the new CEO, Richard Stanley, which happens in about two hours' time, where he's likely to address the outlook for the bank as well as concerns about his uh, corporate CDO expo uh, exposure as well as the outlook, uh, overall outlook for the bank's earnings. Uh, some of the banks in Korea also look fairly interesting. Take a look at what's happening with three in particular. Now, Reuters is quoting the KDIC. This is the Korea Development Investment Corporation. And the FSC is saying that the CEOs of Wuri Financial Group, Wuri Bank, and Korea Development Bank, that bank not listed, their resignations had been received and accepted, and so they would be replaced soon. But take a look at the stock for Wuri. A nice bounce there on that news, up 4%. Industrial Bank of Korea, incidentally, the CEO of that bank offered his resignation, but that had not been accepted, and we do have a nice reaction as well. In contrast, Cookman Bank, uh, the country's largest, off by 3.3% this morning. Maura, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Arnold. Now, on the U.S. political front, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have split crucial presidential contests in Indiana and North Carolina. The results push Obama closer to securing the Democratic nomination. They also keep Clinton's faint hopes alive. We're joined now by Jay Gray of NBC News. He is live at Obama's camp in Raleigh, North Carolina. Good evening to you, Jay. Hey there, more The drama here in North Carolina ended very early. Barack Obama with a decisive win. He took the stage here in Raleigh about an hour to an hour and a half ago, sounding much more like the Democratic presidential nominee, though he hasn't wrapped that up as you talked about. He talked about the Republicans. He also talked about his party and how they must stay united, even though this vote room continues to be very divided. He winning here in North Carolina, Hillary Clinton winning in Indiana tonight. So this race moves on now to the next primaries in West Virginia and Kentucky, Maura. It just continues to roll on. All right, the never-ending story. Jay, thank you very much for joining us. It's got to be an end coming up soon, right? The election is November. Okay, coming up, though, the U.S. dollar has been gaining against uh, the yen today. We'll look at the action in the forex markets. That is next. Consider three ways to boost your investment returns at interactive brokers. Minimizing your trading costs with low commissions. Directly accessing 60 markets globally. Controlling your leverage with portfolio margining. Interactive brokers. Options, stocks, futures, forex, bonds. In one account on one screen. Worldwide. PTT Chemical, a leading and innovative company, through strong partnerships of insight and knowledge, aims to co-create far into the future via a robust integrated value chain. At Thai Plastic Mac Group, we are long-term partnership with PTT Chemical. I am very impressed with PTT Chemical reliability in delivering raw material promptly under any type situation. Berlin Enterprise is Thailand's major plastic packaging company dealing with multinational clients. Through a long-term partnership, we trust PTT Chemical for raw materials, crucial market trend information and staff capability to produce quality products and technical services for customers. We are very proud to be associated with our King Research Project, Lampard Beer Wastewater Treatment. I am happy with PTT Chemical support for this project, which helps the environment and Thai community. PTT Chemical. Chemicals come alive through innovation. We have the mother of all economic data. That's the jobs the report. The CEO of BP Capital is talking to squad. CPI is coming out today. Housing starts also the hitting the Retail sales numbers uh, just minutes that away. instant reaction and analysis. Food is topping new highs this Let's morning. Let's get the early trading book. A squawk debate. You can't afford to it's miss. It's time to get in the Who game. the deal's dead? We've got a squawk exclusive. You want experts? We've got experts. Our top story this, this morning. This is a busy week. Fastest seller ever. Squawk box, where business turns first. Tonight at 6.30, only on CNBC. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Says CNBC.com News now. 
Welcome back. Cisco Systems tops expectations in the third quarter, but the firm says its customers are still cautious and expects to see a recovery at the end of the year. Energy shares are skyrocketing in Asian trading as crude oil prices hit a fresh record overnight, topping the $122 a barrel level. And Singapore's DBS posts a 2% decline in first quarter profit, but the result beating expectations thanks to rapid loan growth. Details of these stories and more only on CNBC.com. now to the city of Indianapolis in the state of Indiana where the Democratic presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton is speaking right now. Mother, NBC Anna News Bruce is Bruce calling Bruce the race there That's too right. tight to call just yet. My mother had a difficult childhood but worked hard to provide a loving home for us. Okay, uh, let's get back now to uh, Hillary Clinton. I think she's speaking. Yep, she's speaking in Indianapolis, uh, talking to her supporters there. Her rival, Barack Obama, has already been declared or projected the winner in the state of North Carolina. The race now for the state of Indiana is too close to call. Let's listen in on what she has to say. And never stop believing in the promise of America. And yet today, I have met so many people here in Indiana and across America who feel invisible. You sure feel invisible when you're paying 60 or $70 to fill up your tank. You feel invisible when the money you took to the grocery store no longer meets your needs for the next week. You feel invisible when your health insurance disappears and college is out of reach. And you can't believe how invisible you feel when your loved one who served our country in war is ill-served back at home. But I know... I know these stories, and I see you, and I hear you. And I know how hard you're working, working for yourselves and working for your families. And I will never stop fighting for you so that you can have... said that you do want a president who stands strong for you, a president who is ready on day one to take charge as commander in chief and keep our All right, that's uh, safe. Senator Hillary Clinton speaking there in the state of Indiana addressing her supporters. The race there, NBC News says, is still too close to call for a projected winner, but her rival Barack Obama has won the state of North Carolina so far. In terms of delegate lead, he is in the lead at the moment, but the race is by no means far from over. As for the Forex majors right now, let's check and see how the dollar is doing today. You've got 104.87 for dollar yen right now. Euro dollar stands at 154.92. Let's talk to Jan Lambrex, head of Asia Research at Rabobank International. He joins us from Hong Kong with a look at what's happening in the currency markets. Yeah, you've got Japan back in action today, so volume should be a bit more increased than over the last couple of sessions. Uh, how is that affecting trade today? Well, that, of course, uh, makes for a bit more realistic market here. Uh, the thin market conditions do uh, make it diff more difficult to interpret market moves. Having said that, this is still a week in which the Golden Week holidays dominate. Still a week with relatively little happening, also in the U.S., relatively little happening in terms of macro data, at least. So some position squaring has... Uh, has seen uh, uh, the dollar give a little bit back of the gains it makes la made last week. It's difficult to interpret this at this stage. Uh, if you're looking at euro dollar and dollar yen, um, the uh, uh, dollar made some technical gains that could uh, uh, prove a bit further lasting once we were back in full action. Having said that, just looking at sentiment in the market, there's a lot of optimism again, uh, relative optimism now about the US economy. Maybe the recession isn't that bad. Maybe the credit crisis and the worst is behind us. Um, against all that optimism, 
the chances that will be actually uh, disappointed and particularly on the macro data that's coming in remember the US economy is in a recession the labor market is deteriorating just overnight we had the weekly consumer confidence poll there uh, declining five points to minus 46 it is just a reminder that we probably have a lot of weak data coming up that may still hurt the dollar there in the next couple of weeks the next couple of months a real meaningful dollar rebound is further off uh, uh, than we think okay then yeah and give me some levels for what to expect then I look near term uh, um, the dollar could still be, be gaining a little bit here in the very short term a week or so in, in euro dollar I wouldn't be surprised if we revisit like around about 152 but from that point as a weaker data comes in I think we are going to revisit the recent highs in euro dollar a return to 160 is very well possible then um, it would have to be the next three months or so when the dollar is still weak after that a more meaningful dollar rebound may set in and we think the at the end of the year we'll see euro dollar at 148 Jan, uh, good to see you. He's not currently an FOMC voting member, but Fed, uh, Kansas City Fed President Thomas Honig coming out with some comments about inflation and really underlining the inflationary pressures in the U.S. at the moment. Is it a bit premature, though, to be uh, talking about uh, rate hikes uh, by the Fed at this point, despite all those inflationary headwinds that, we are, that are ever-present uh, in the market right now? I would say it's absolutely premature. I, I am convinced that the moment we see a rebound in the U.S. economy that's meaningful, the Fed will be relatively early in tightening rates again. Well, this is probably a story for the first half of next year. That would be my definition of relatively early. This is not a story for in the next six months or the next nine months even. Um, if you're looking, though, at what the Fed's doing, of course they're talking about inflation. They have been front-loading. Uh, in January, they decided to start cutting very aggressively, and they called it front-loading. When you're front-loading, there comes a point where you think you are done. And that's the point where the Fed's right now. Their, their intention is to pause. They think they have done enough. They've been front-loading aggressively. Now it's time to focus again on their inflation credentials. And, and realistically so, of course, because inflation is at elevated levels and there's still a lot of pipeline pressure. A quick reminder of that was served, of course, overnight when uh, oil prices hit a fresh record high. Hey, Jan, can I get your thoughts on what the uh, Indonesian Central Bank did, hiking interest rates there quite unexpectedly? What is that going to do to the rupiah? Well, they were sure surprising the market to the extent of the timing. Um, many were looking for a rate hike coming up. This looks like uh, front loaning on behalf of the Bank of Indonesia uh, for the uh, fuel, uh, fuel subsidy cuts that are coming up. Uh, they will be fearful of the inflationary, inflationary implications thereof, and therefore the tightening already. This is just a small step though, 25 basis points. If indeed fuel subsidies are cut as much as 30%, that would have a real impact there on inflation and would see the Bank of Indonesia do more there. It looks like they're focusing more on inflation now uh, than growth, but the simple fact is that if they don't, uh, they aren't seen out there as, as being mindful of inflation, the growth implications may be all the worse. Yeah, and Aussie dollar very quickly, we saw that hawkish commentary from the RBA earlier on this week. Is that setting up the market for uh, a possible adjustment in their inflation expectations upwards when we see that monetary po policy uh, statement at the end of the week? I do, I do in any case that the market uh, is currently thinking uh, that the RBA perhaps may do another rate hike and that will be uh, bolstering up uh, the Aussie dollar for the time being. I, I have trouble really factoring this in as, as I'm really following through on this one because the downside risk to growth have really been rising. At some point those go are going to prevail. So I, I would consider uh, the current rally in Aussie dollar there as perhaps a better selling opportunity. Also being mindful of the fact that some of the factors uh, that have been fueling the Aussie dollar, like the rally in, 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 in hard commodities base metals, um, look a bit shaky to me. Recessions remain for all that they are, very strong disinflationary forces. So I would expect that there is going to be a reckoning, especially in base metals in the upcoming months. If we have a correction there, that could really hurt the Aussie. All right, Jan, thank you so much for joining us today. Jan Lambrex, head of Asia Research at Rabobank International. Let's uh, have a look now again at uh, Hillary Clinton speaking in Indiana here. She is addressing her supporters there, talking about... Uh, uh, the election night, well, at least in the primary election, I should say, uh, the race is too close to call. According to NBC News, it's still a very tight race between her and her rival, Barack Obama. I do want to stress that, uh, even though other agencies have called the race uh, or predicted the race to be a, a winner for Hillary Clinton. All right, coming up next on CNBC's Cash Flow, Palm Oil prices have had a nice run-up over the last year. Our next guest, though, says a correction may be due, and now may be the time to start selling. Stick around.
Some think startup. We think IPO. Some think competition. We think partnership. Some think successful business. We think wealth protection. Whatever your vision, we at Credit Suisse seek new perspectives to make it a reality. Just because the black sands of northern Canada hold the world's second largest oil reserve doesn't mean it's easy for an oil company to go out and get it. You need to accurately predict what world trends mean for business before you can develop the technologies to meet them. That's what Emerson does. We anticipate our customers' needs so that when they're ready... Hi, we've been waiting. We're ready. Are you? Emerson, consider it solved. On the next show, we'll find out how currencies are doing ahead of the central bank meetings in Europe and the United Kingdom. And we will run through first quarter earnings from Southeast Asia's largest lender, DBS. Find out how Singapore banks are managing their exposure to the U.S. subprime mortgage crisis. Another Faber exclusive. The definitive agreement expected to be signed tonight. The information you need. Fast, accurate, unbiased. CNBC. The world's top rice exporter, Thailand, is pulling the plug on a proposal for an OPEC-style rice cartel. Thailand had floated the idea of a grouping that would have given producers greater control over prices. Now, rice prices have run up about 50% this year amid a growing shortage for that key grain and staple of the Asian diet. But the idea was lambasted by the Thai rice exporters as well as senators in the Philippines, a major importer of rice. Instead. Thailand is now proposing holding a forum in the coming months with Asia's top rice exporters to improve productivity. We'll turn into another commodity that has been rising and making gains as well. Palm oil prices have risen nearly 50% in the last year. Our next guest says, says, however, to expect a correction of about 10% within the next two years. And with that correction, he expects a reversal in sentiment in some key palm oil stocks. Nagurnan Turachelvam is Equities Analyst at ABN AMRO Asia Securities. He joins us now on set. Nagurnan, why do you think we're going to see a correction in palm oil prices, given that with the rest of the soft commodity sector, especially those related to food, uh, the demand keeps uh, increasing? Palm oil prices are due for a correction because uh, palm oil production are due for a significant increase in the next year. We expect an increase in palm oil production to the order of about 10%, and we expect palm oil prices to actually correct by the order of about 20%. On the demand side, though, I mean, with more uh, countries uh, like India and China getting a little bit wealthier, more demand for food products, wouldn't that help to alleviate or, or eat up some of this increasing supply? The increase in consumption for palm oil-related products has already been factored into by the price. The Increase in food demand in China and India is a factor, but that's already in the price. Biodiesel is actually due for a correction as well. Biodiesel is not sustainable at these levels, and that is going to affect demand. Okay. A lot of investors, especially a lot of uh, speculators, have been getting into palm oil stocks, believing that this was a ride up that they could sustain for a while. Would this also signal correction in the prices of palm oil stocks as well? Definitely, Mora. We expect a correction in the palm oil stocks, in the palm oil producers, such as IOI and KLK. So I would advise investors to short those stocks and go long on the palm oil processors, such as Wilma. Wilma will actually benefit from a correction in palm oil prices because it's a palm oil refiner or a palm oil processor. Okay, now Wilmer also has had uh, recent acquisitions that it is trying to integrate at the moment. Is that an earnings driver or are they stuck in the process of trying to sort their businesses into one seamless operation? They have been very successful in integrating the different aspects of the business. We expect robust earnings of a nearly, nearly a billion dollars net earnings in 2008, and we expect uh, Wilma to uh, deliver strong operating earnings in the next couple of years. Okay, if, if we see a correction of about, say, 10% oil prices, palm oil prices, and we see a correction of 10% in palm oil stocks as well, at those levels, would they look attractive to you? Possibly. But I think we are some way from that uh, stage. So how much moment. of a correction in terms of palm oil stocks do you expect to see? 
Yeah, for IOI, we expect a correction of about 20%, and for KLK, about 25%. Okay. What about other drivers out there uh, for the palm oil sector? I mean, are you looking at uh, perhaps, uh, you know, demand coming from either, uh, you know, non-food, non-biodiesel, but other uses for palm oil in terms of products, or are you looking at perhaps consolidation in the industry as well? I don't think there's going to be much consolidation. We've seen consolidation in the form of Wilma merger. Uh, they are companies who have strong balance sheets, but they're focusing on capacity expansion rather than consolidation. Okay, Nigurna, thank you so much for joining us today. Nigurna and Telvu Turu Chalam, equities analyst here at ABN AMRO Asia Securities, joining us. We've got lots more coming up in the next hour of CBC's Cash Flow. Stay tuned to CNBC, first in business worldwide. Imagine there was a way to make steel while doing more to protect the environment. Now there is. In Wuhan, China, major steel producer Wisco leads the way. In strategic partnership with GE, Wisco continues to innovate as a global leader in cleaner steel. As steel is made, unhealthy gas is released. Using advanced technologies developed by GE, Wisco captures this waste byproduct to refuel its own power plant, generating new electricity while reducing harmful emissions. Think of it as energy recycling. With GE technology, Wisco enhances efficiency, saves energy, and cuts emissions, improving air quality for everyone. Now we can all breathe a little easier. Wisco and GE, partners for cleaner steel. Let's do our morning call. Morning call is next on Squawk Box. China, Taiwan and the Southeast Asian markets are all about to open. PetroChina is the key stock to watch. No upside expected for Taiwan stocks today. Of course, the Yuan question is going to come up. Get a preview of the market action in Morning Call, part of Squawk Box. Weekdays at 8.50 a.m. on CNBC. First in business worldwide. Morning Call, brought to you by CIC Bank Privé. I'll make fuel compromises. They don't get me anywhere. Why should I settle for anything less? Just because others say so. These are my principles. It's time to stick to them. All the UEFA Euro 2008 action. Now at your fingertips with Hubstation. You can record, pause, and enjoy instant replay anytime you want. You'll never miss another goal with Hubstation. For a limited period only. Get the Hub Station at a special price of $197.95. Call 1630 or log on to our website for more details. Asian markets gain with Canon and uh, other exporters in uh, Japan. Higher today, on the back of news from Cisco, we had better than expected results from the U.S. tech giant. DBS Group, Southeast Asia's biggest bank by assets, posting a less than feared 2% drop in quarterly profit as growth at its loan business helped to offset credit-related write-downs. And General Electric will reportedly pick rival lender Acom as the preferred bidder for its Japanese consumer loan business in a $2.9 billion deal that would create the country's biggest player in the industry.
and good morning and welcome to the second hour of CBC's Cash Flow. I'm Maura Fogarty. Thanks for joining us today. Here's what's in store for you in the second hour of the program. We've got Singapore Star Hub and the Philippines Globe Telecom. Both companies are announcing their first quarter earnings today. We're going to preview what to expect from those two companies and analyze the growth outlook of other major telco players in the region. Plus, Mumbai is set to start trading in just about an hour and a half. We'll take a look at the stocks to watch with an equity analyst live from India.